Hello Kuma fans, Charlie with the Gossiker application staff. Got another video for you. This one is another from the request box. Customers curious about doing an odd shaped face groove in advanced one touch software. Let's pull this over and you'll see that, uh, oh, that was interesting. There we go. So I've got this delightful little uh, dovetail face groove. Not too difficult, but um, it still is a bit confusing to try to get advanced one touch to understand what we're doing. So uh, we got a 66 degree angle going into towards the ID. We have edge breaks of 20 thousandths on the outer lip and 30 thousandths on the base. And so we have to express to advance one touch that uh, this is the part we want to make. No problem, we can accomplish. So I've already got a bunch of videos on Advanced One Touch that show the setting up of the machine environment. So I'm not going to go through that. But as you can see, I've got just a 12 inch chunk of material sitting in here, two inches thick. And all I'm going to do is bust out this groove because it's it's the point of interest. I'm also going to uh, avoid using the machining sheet. Those of you that have been using Advanced One Touch probably already know that in machining section, you can define the shape of your part and click on the word process decide. And as long as your tools have been defined, the software will automatically make the decision of which tools and which cuts to make, basically programming your part for you. But we're gonna do this manually just so that you can see how uh, how how the software functions and from then on feel free to use process decide all you want so I'm going to highlight the first unit and touch process edit because there's not already a process there it says okay there I can't edit something that doesn't exist let's go ahead and start a new one this is of course a turning operation and we'll pick the groove cycle now let's talk quickly about the four different groove cycles we have the standard groove is assuming that the width of the groove, whether it's face, ID, or OD, is the same as the tool. So it's just a single plunge. Then we have the roughing of a wide groove, which means that, okay, yeah, this tool is smaller than the width of the groove, so we'll have to plunge in a couple of times in order to make our, uh, our final shape. The uh, finish wide groove will uh, start at one side, finish it in a, uh, a logical direction and then pull itself out and finish on the other side. And then you've got the cutoff process. The, um, the finish wide groove is what I'm gonna select right now. The roughing wide groove would pretty much be the same as this evolution, but uh, in order to keep the video short, we'll just go straight to the finishing groove. After I select it, you'll see the uh, six different cycles that we have available to us, ODID and FACE being the first. Don't get lulled into those guys. Those are assuming that the walls are parallel and the floor is perpendicular. You don't have the opportunity to deviate. With those three, you can still break edges inside and outside the groove, but you're pretty much limited in terms of uh, the shape of the tool of the groove. So we've got a free outside, which is OD, and I get to define whatever shape I want, free inside, samo samo. But based on the, the print that I showed you and what we've been discussing, this is definitely a free face. Now, I don't have a tool set up for this yet, so I'm just gonna create one in tool setting. We're gonna call this tool number one and edge one, no big deal. Now you notice that I have two offsets for this, uh, uh, this particular groove tool uh, dialog block. The reason behind that is Akuma knows that if a groove tool only has one offset, that allows you to uh, adjust the location of the groove as well as the depth of the groove, but it doesn't give you any provision for the width of the groove. So Akuma gives you a second offset. Can cycles will automatically use that. So now you're using the front edge of the tool and it's related offset for one edge and the back edge of the tool for the other edge of the groove. We're gonna call this a four inch long tool, four thousandths nose radius, and now the tool width. You notice it's not asking me about any angle, but we know full well from looking at this, uh, this print here that our tool is gonna to have a dovetail on it. But I'm not worried about that. That's a little more complicated. I'd have to go through easy modeling and edit the uh, insert shape, and I don't even need to do that. 
I'm just going to give this a, a standard width. We're going to call it a square. And even though our solid graphic is not going to be accurate, we're going to be able to see the tool path for this and it'll, it'll work out just fine. So there's my tool definition. I say, okay, everything's happy. Cut conditions, I'm not really running apart. So I'll let you uh, work on your own feeds and speeds. Now we'll get into our shape. So the first thing we, uh, First thing we're going to consider here is the 66 degree angle. Now this is uh, potentially could require some math on our part, but I'm going to let uh, Advanced One Touch do the, the the math for me. So the first thing I want to do is I want to specify where the um, where the inner edge of the groove is. I'm going to work from the ID out. You can do either, but I know exactly where the lip is, where the 66 degree angle intersects the front of the part. So uh, that's what I'm going to work on. I'm going to make sure that uh, my starting point is the ID of this groove, but my print that I have hidden over here off to the side does not... Um, uh, it shows the OD of the groove. So I'm going to use the advanced one touch math feature to uh, figure out where the inner portion of my groove is. That's the OD of the groove and I'm going to subtract from it the um, the groove width. Oops, let's not transpose that. And I don't know if you noticed that, but you can do math in the operation block for your um, for your AOT. Now even that I want to bring in a little bit because I'm going to use the automatic corner rounding feature in order to put the fillet on the ID. So let's go 9.157 and a start point of zero. All right, so as you can see I've got my start point right here. The first move is going to move up in X so that would be a facing move. My final point as we just established should be 9. 257. Now we're going to start seeing the little line moving there. It's, this is a large part, so it's a little difficult to see. I could zoom in, but I'm already losing you. So before we get to 9.257 here, we're going to want to put in the 30 thousandths fillet. Croup. Ah, what the heck? Let's go ahead and zoom in just so that you can uh, you can see what. There we go. Numbers lock. So much easier on the control than it is on a PC, let me tell you. So it's already thrown in 90 degrees of arc here. And as soon as I as soon as I finish this up, it will complete the fillet. So the next move after this is going to be a taper move. This is the one that's um, 66 degrees from vertical vertical 66 there we go and I don't know what the X is if I sat here with my calculator and did a little Pythagorean theorem I could figure it out but why should I have to when I got a computer in front of me I do know the end point in Z which in this case is uh, I think it's also 170 yeah this is gonna be uh, minus 174.5 gotta turn on my shoop minus 174.5 and wow that uh, that kind of malfunctioned there minus 174.5 now I've got my act together and this as I mentioned before this angle is 270 degrees minus the 66 degrees boom look at that so now it's a little tough to see with this graphic because uh, it's a little coarse, but now I have slightly more than 90 degrees of arc. It went ahead and made the, uh, made the fillet tangent to this angle that's coming off of the, uh, coming off of the fillet. And before I make it to the bottom, I want to throw on my 30 thousandths. It didn't, it didn't start that fillet yet because it doesn't know which direction I'm going, but no big deal. As soon as I express to it that my next move is a facing move, it will connect that fillet to the vertical. Everybody's good. So let's see. We decided that the outside of the groove 
is 9.606. Boom. We're starting to make a, make a little action here. But before we get to 9606, I want to throw in another 30 thousandths. Fill it. Ah, went the wrong way. Doesn't matter. As soon as I make my facing move back out, oops, not facing, should be a longitudinal move back out to Z0. Flip. Now it flipped that fillet around. It's going in the right direction. One last thing to do. I have to do one more fillet. And I believe, what did I say that? Yeah, the outside is 20. Mm -hmm. So 20 thousandths, there it is. I don't know if you've d discovered this the hard way, but uh, you do have to have a straight line. I cannot terminate on a corner round. So I'm just gonna make a little face move. Currently we're at 9646. So if I just make a, oh, let's go 696. We'll just give it a little bit of a straight line move. And now I've got my entire profile as it should be. Now that I'm done, I'm going to say next for the pattern. I only need one of them. I'll leave that alone. Then I've got my tool path where I can change where the tool changes, where it delivers the front of the part, all that happy horse hockey. And now I'll say, OK. Now we have the process finished, but we want to test it. So let's take a look at it. I hit my process test. Here is my part. Now, because I didn't take the time to define the tool as actually having a dovetail, if I just hit the start button, zoop, 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 my tool goes through. And if I, let's zoom in a little bit here. Let's do a little uh, display change and we'll do a zoom action. There. Oh, come on, baby. Okay. Well, let's try running that one more time. And I'm zoomed in too far now. Isn't that typical? Okay, let's just auto scale it again. Uh, all I wanted to show you was that the, the graphic representation up here is going to be square. But if I were to single block this, and we watch as that tool comes in. One, two, three. Okay, watch the tool itself. There's our vertical move and our fillet. There's that angle. That's where our dovetail came into play. There's the fillet on the bottom. It'll come back out of the hole. Plunge back from the top. Fillet, fillet, fillet. And pop out of the hole. So, um, even though the graphic representation is square, we know that we've got a good hole, uh, a good groove based on the shape of the tool. A little note about the grooving cycle. The first move that it makes is going to retract from its finished wall closer to the wall than the second plunge. So if you find you're blowing out your dovetail, uh, invert your selection change the tool path so it starts at the OD and works inward. Hope this helps you out. If you need any other assistance, just holler and happy to, uh, I'll be happy to address anything I can. You can also reach out to any go local Gossiger application staff near to your shop. We'll take care of you. Uh, feel free to like and subscribe and uh, we'll see you on the next one.